show you how Geometry and Algebra 2 Take out your notebook, there's a lot to do Mr. Kennedy here, your favorite math teacher. Are you ready to do some coordinate geometry proofs? That's what I thought. Let's do it. You do the math. All right, mathematicians. On the grid provided, plot the three points that were given to you and connect them to make a triangle. Don't forget to label your x and y axis. Here's what your triangle should look like. Remember, we want to prove that this is isosceles, and that means having two congruent sides. Now, we have to remember which formula to use. How do you prove two things are congruent? Did somebody say math? It's the distance formula. You use the distance formula to prove that two things are congruent. And that's exactly what we need to prove that this triangle is isosceles. So, I need you to help me find the distance of RE. So we need to find delta x and delta y and plug them into the distance formula. Delta x looks like 3, delta y looks like 4. So let's simplify. 9 plus 16 simplifies to 25. The square root of 25 is 5. You're like a human calculator, you know that? You are so good at math. So we've got a couple of 5s. Those are equal. So let's write our conclusion. Since RE and ED, the two sides that we took the distance of, have equal distance. We always have to mention the formula we used. Then, well, what does it mean to have equal distance? Right, it means they're congruent. So RE is congruent to ED. That's pretty much it. That's all you need to prove something's isosceles. So my AND says, AND this triangle, R-E-D, is isosceles. You did great! How much fun is math? Try this next one. I'm Pythagoras the Penguin. I'd like to remind you of some of your other tools. Aren't they fun? Whee! Like here's the midpoint formula. The average of the x's, comma, the average of the y's. You use this formula to prove that something is bisected. Yay! Here's the slope formula. You use this to prove that things are parallel or perpendicular. Delta y over delta x. Whee! So now that we're all done plotting our points on the coordinate plane, we're ready to do some calculations and prove that this is an isosceles trapezoid. Well, we should start by proving that it's a trapezoid, and then we can prove that it's isosceles. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral that has one pair of parallel sides and another pair of non-parallel sides. So how do we prove that something's parallel or not parallel? Right, the slope formula. So here's the slope formula. Delta y over delta x, one of our favorite formulas of all time. I'm a big fan. Let's do it. I want the slope of AB. Delta y is 1 minus 3. That's negative 2. Delta x is negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. So that reduces to positive 1. Now we want to calculate the slope of BC. That's the next side. Why don't you take a second and do that? Uh-oh. Did you get negative 3 over 0? Well, that's the right answer, but you can't divide by 0. That's illegal in math. So we call this slope undefined. It means it's a vertical line, and it has no slope. All right, let's move on. The slope of CD. Go ahead, delta y over delta x. 
Let me know when you've got the answer. One, one proof. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Did you get one? Your fraction should reduce to one. And that's a good indication because it shows that these two opposite sides are parallel. So there's one pair of parallel. Let's check the last slope just to make sure that this is not a parallelogram. The slope of AD. Did you get 0 over 3? Now that's not undefined. A 0 in the numerator of a fraction is fine. It just reduces to 0. So that's very different. A 0 slope is very different from an undefined slope. This one's horizontal. This one's vertical. But are they parallel? Absolutely not. They do not have equal slopes. So this side, this pair is parallel. The other pair is not. We're ready to draw a conclusion. Boy, I want to be a mathematician when I grow up. All right, let's draw a conclusion. So I set up since, then, and. And the since part says what formula I used. I used the slope formula. So I'm going to say since only one pair of sides, I have to mention slope, have equal slope. Okay? What does it mean to have equal slope? That means parallel. So I have only one pair of parallel sides. Only one pair of sides are parallel. The and is what I was trying to prove. This is a trapezoid. A, B, C, D is a trapezoid. Woo! So that's done. But wait, I still haven't proved it's isosceles. All I did was prove it's a trapezoid. You ready for part two? I thought so. Let's do it. You do the math. So here is the distance formula, another one of my favorites. Let's take the distance of the non-parallel sides. So the distance of BC is giant square root, something squared plus something squared. Remember the way that this looks, and then you could just plug in. So delta x goes in there. Delta x is negative 1, minus negative 1 is 0. We did that before. Delta y is negative 2 minus 1, that's negative 3. All right? So remember, when you square a negative, it comes out positive. So this comes out to radical 9, which is 3. Then let's do the distance of the other non-parallel side, which was AD. So giant square root of something squared plus something squared. Delta x is 4 minus 1, 3. Delta y is 3 minus 3, 0. So we see we get radical 9, which equals 3. So those sides are congruent. Let's write a conclusion. Since the non-parallel sides have equal distance. Right? In the since portion of the sentence, we have to mention the formula we used, distance formula. Then, they are congruent. Or, of course, I could say then BC is congruent to AD, the two sides that turned out to be congruent. And, I'm going to say trapezoid, because I already proved that A, B, C, D is isosceles. Two congruent sides. Any questions? All right, mathematicians. Hope you had a grand old time. I'm Mr. Kennedy, your favorite teacher. May the math be with you.